like to again welcome you to tonight's regular meeting of the Springdale City Council. This is Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. I'm calling the meeting to order, and uh, I'll ask our city clerk to call the roll. Mayor Sprouse. Here. Brian Powell. <clears throat> Amelia Williams. Here. Jeff Watson. Here. Mike Overton. Here. Mike Lawson. Here. Rex Bailey. Present. Randall Harriman. Here. Mark Fujirus. Here. Ernest Kate. Here. All right, thank you. Uh, we're at item four on the agenda. If there are any residents that would like to make brief comments to the council considering an item that is not already on tonight's agenda, you're welcome to make your way to the podium at this time. We just ask that you clearly state your name and address and please keep your comments brief. Is there anyone that would like to address the council concerning an item that's not already on tonight's agenda? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to item five, approval of minutes. Council, uh, you've had an opportunity to look over those. If there are no changes or additions, I'd entertain a motion to approve them as presented. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Item six, procedural motions. What's your pleasure, Council? I move for A and B. Got a motion and a second for A and B. Uh, roll call, please. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Pujarus? Yes. Carry seven zero. All right, we're ready for Patsy and uh, Planning Commission report. That's the lion's share of the agenda tonight, Patsy. Okay, they were. Y'all had a long meeting, I know. This one works. Okay, I thought we had a I new one. I think I was here for almost. I thought I was getting to do, use the new one. Uh, this uh, me, this one's short compared to probably what's going to be next time. Not to scare Just you off, but anyway. Um, the first item on the agenda is a request to rezone 13.91 acres located at the southeast corner of uh, the intersection of Bob Mills and Oak Grove Road. The request is to rezone the property from A1 to Plan Unit Development PUD. Planning Commission reviewed this request and recommends approval, and I want to go over the details of the PUD as we normally do. Uh, this is the wait, project... Wait, wait, you said from A1... From A1 to, or I'm sorry, from MF16 to PUD, I'm sorry. It had already been rezoned to MF16. They want to rezone it to a PUD because they want to increase the density of the... Because of they want to increase the density of the, of the project, okay? So we're going to be talking about the planning and development plan for the Ramsey at Springdale, which is the name given to this project. It consists of four tracks that you can see in, in the document itself. It will be called the, the Ramsey at Springdale. Uh, it is 13.91 acres. The development strategy is a multifamily, high-density residential development, which will serve the community in enhancing social connectivity between the residents of, of um, the Ramsey at Springdale and the surrounding amenities, internal sidewalks from all buildings and maximum social and the community interaction. The apartment buildings will be appropriately spaced to promote encourage relaxation, recreation, and social activity. The uh, permitted uses will be limited to use unit one, which is citywide uses by right, use unit 12, high density residential uses, and use unit 27 parking lot. So as you will note, this is not a mixed use facility. It is for apartment units only, and it will be for the parking lots and city uses by right is what will be contained in this PUD. Uh, the total developed area is 13.91 acres. They have uh, 7.42 acres of impervious area, 6.49 acres of open space for the total of 13.91. All of the buildings will have a 30-foot front setback, an 8-foot side, and a 20-foot uh, rear. And here are the elevations of the buildings that will be included in this project, and that's, that's the layout, as, as you can see. Parking is provided 1.10 parking stalls per bedroom, 1.65 parking stalls per unit. For a total of parking spaces required of 429 stalls, and they are uh, actually providing 441. So there'll be some excess parking for visitors to the facility. The amenities that are provided will be interior sidewalks, a park with a pavilion, a dog park, benches, trees, uh, natural lawn areas, a swimming pool, and landscaping throughout the side. The exterior building materials on the walls will be stone veneer, left fiber cement or LP smart siding, board and batten fiber cement or LP smart side, and brick veneer. 
The roofing will be architectural sing shingles, color to be weatherwood slate or terracotta, corrugated metal roofing at awnings and canopies, color to be galvanized gray or black. Uh, they will have painted steel brackets, balconies and awnings and cedar or cypress timbers. The windows will be vinyl windows to be either white or clay. And the exterior doors will, fiber, will be fiberglass doors that are painted. This is under one lot, one property management system. The property is to remain in a single ownership with all common areas to be maintained by the owner or through an agreement with a management company. The garage is to be used for the parking of vehicles and shall not be used as storage units or living. Parking on the grass is prohibited. The development will be accessed from Oak Grove Road and 48th Street. As you can see from this site plan, it has access on both sides. The sidewalks will be constructed a minimum of five feet wide on all common areas as shown on the site plan. Privacy fences are not proposed. There are no chain link type fences will be allowed. Services for all public and quasi public utilities will be located underground. Landscaping will re meet the requirements of the city's code of ordinances, chapter 56 for landscape street frontage buffers, perimeter landscaping <coughs> and interior parking lot um, spaces and parking islands. The number of parking stalls proposed to provide a minimum of 1.1 stall per bedroom. The total number of bedrooms with this development will be 389. The total number of parking stalls will be 441. Based on the experience the developer has with this type of development, we feel this amount will be adequate to accommodate the high density residential. Side lock walks leading from each building to through the site to 48th will promote connectivity, walkability between the development and nearby community attractions. Planned landscaping will add to the aesthetic pleasure of the streets within and adjacent to the development. And they submitted a lighting and landscaping plan that promotes security and surveillance. And that's basically the elements of the PUD itself. It's a lot simpler when it's one management and it's all, all multifamily buildings. There's not as many details to go through and remains as one property management. The Planning Commission recommends approval of this rezoning request and the title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springville, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from medium high density multifamily residential district MF 16 to plan unit development PUD and declaring an emergency. And as you know, the development plan and the site plan is part of the zoning ordinance itself. Okay. Betsy, was there any objections? No. No. Will well, the you ordinance be adopted? Got a motion and a second. I want to ask one question just while you got that picture up there. Okay. The I'm assuming that's detention up on the upper left. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Are so. And this is an off the wall question, but the detention just to the south that was put in when the super center was built, mm -hmm. is that is that just for the super center, or, or is the is the idea that that will serve more of that property to the south as it sells, or do we know that yet? That's, that's a regional detention. It takes care of all that stuff so that goes in around it to get to this. Everything and then, that will be built on the, what was initially developed. On the on the south side of all this property, all the yes. way about 48th goes to that regional okay, detention. Gotcha. This is to pick up that additional from this site that doesn't go into that. I think it kind of breaks. Some of it goes over to some of it go 48th to Street and some of it goes to that back corner and they're detaining so that we don't, okay. uh, we don't impact those houses that are on the north side of Mill Street, or Bob Mills Road down through there. Okay. Thank you. Will there will there be fencing on this north side? I see that house is like super close to it. I, or is it wide open? To uh, I think the landscaping plan shows that there's some landscaping buffers between there, but it's residential to residential, so it's not it's not required to have a lot of, of screening. Even if it's still MF16 would not have to have screening. Does it have screening on that? I'm looking at Connor. He'll have to tell me the details. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think there is some screening in there with landscaping, but not fencing in there. Yeah. I don't think. Jeff, did she get your question? Because that's well, not what I heard. Jeff. Just asking yeah. about this, but I, my question is: there's no difference between. A MS there is. There's some screening requirements between a 16 and and, and a single family. I can't tell you off the top of my head, but I can look it up for you if, so if you want to know what it is. Well, I, I don't think they did any less screening requirements than what was with an MF-16 in this PUD. 
we wouldn't we wouldn't have asked them to or allowed them to do anything less. I didn't I don't have this, the landscaping plan with me okay. to see what it is. I have my microphone on. Um, I, heard, I think I heard you say there's 389 units. 389 bedrooms, and that's what the parking is based on. Is um, hold on. Connor, can you tell me off the top of your head? I think you had it on another slide, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It shows um, how many units? Connor, can you go over the number of units, please? 272, yeah. So how many? It's 13 acres? 13 acres. If, if we were to take... At, at one point in time, somebody came and asked for this property to go to MF-16, thinking that they wanted high-density... Correct. ...apartments, probably, I guess. MF-16. Yes. yes. And if it were still to remain MF-16 on 13 acres, how many apartment units could you build on 13 acres? Okay, somebody I have to calculate it out. I don't have a calculator. Some, some, something less than 272, obviously, because you said the reason why they're doing the PUD <laughs> is because they wanted a higher, higher density. density. Yes, that's correct. They wanted a higher density. Well, why do we want a higher density? Well, we want, we want the ability to have a, a quality project with a higher density. Well, and with a PUD, why, we can Why get can that. we not, if, if, if the, our problem as a city is a higher quality, why can we not do something to our existing zoning ordinances instead of having to have these PUDs come in with a higher density every time? Do we need a higher density uh, zoning? We have an MF24. They could have okay. come in with 24, but we don't have as much control with it. The minimum understand. standards we have in multifamily well, design standards is all that this, they can do. How this benefits us, how it well, benefits the city. Okay. I understand how it benefits the developer. Okay, we know exactly what we're going to get. We know what the buildings are going to look like. We know how they're going to be placed. We know where all of the um, amenities are going to be placed. And once we approve this, if it gets sold to somebody else, it's got to be built the same way. If we do a standard MF24 or MF16, all they have to meet is the minimum standards. Well, I mean, why would we have rezoned it to MF24? I don't think we would have. I mean, it was already MF-16. Well, if we had rezoned it to MF-16, they could put it... Is it MF-16. If, they, if we had rezoned it to MF-24, they could have put 16 units per acre and do just the minimum. If it's rezoned to MF-16, they, they can put 12 units per acre and meet just the minimum. To get to the 16, they have to be able to meet some of the... Um, Incentives to get to the higher what, density. What are those incentives? Uh, different kinds of material, more open space, more amenities, well, we those kinds of things. design standards for apartments, right? Yeah. Some years ago. Yeah. And, and you're saying those design standards are not adequate? Well, they give us a better control in that we can, we can start with 12 and go to 16 with the incentives. If they want to rezone it to MF-16 and only be 12, then it's just the minimum standard. And you got to determine if the minimum standards is enough. By definition, though, minimum uh, MF-16, MF-12, they're all going to be minimum standards. It, it, design standards are going to be minimum standards. Mm -hmm. We can go up in what we ask for right. in, by doing this PUD. Okay. Right. What, right. What, yeah. how, did, how did we go up on this one from what, well, what they might have done with an MF-16? We have more open space. We have a higher quality construction. We have more open space with more units. Is that what you're telling me? There's more open space because there's more units? I don't understand. We have more open space. We have a higher quality construction in the building. We know what the materials are going to be, what they're going to look like. We know what the minimum, the, the amenities that they're putting in there. We have a higher quality product that we know is going to be built just like this. I don't understand why that would be a problem if the developer's willing well, to my, go that route. It's not a problem. I want oh, okay. that. Oh, okay. Why can't we put it in our design standards? Well, because our design standards have to be minimum. We're going to have to spend some time increasing our minimum standards, and I don't know what that does to recent legislation that puts stipulations on what you can do with design standards. That's true. And, you know, there's been a lot of 
legislation or legislation at the state level that has changed what we can do with minimum standards. I don't know, and, and that's something Ernest would probably have to do some research, can, without everybody agreeing to it, can we change those minimum standards in our multifamily design standards? I don't know. When we sit down and work with a developer who wants to do a minimum or a higher quality, more units on that, we've been able to sit down and work with them on HUD regulations and it works well. Yeah, but the trade-off is, is that we have to go with a higher density, right? Not always. That's basically the trade-off. Well, I guess I guess you could say that, yeah. It is but, in this case. Yeah. 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 But that's not all bad either. No. And, and it also gives the opportunity to do, again, mixed use. They chose not to do that with this one because there's there's facilities closer to it. If we go with a PUD, in other cases, we have a way to do mixed use. We're just not doing it on this one. I mean, they could come back and ask for MF24 and lay it out totally different, and we wouldn't get this good of arrangement of buildings and parking and that kind of stuff because it's minimum standards again. And it might get turned down as MF24. But if they came in with MF16, we could get 12, and there's no way to turn it down if they can meet the minimum standards. Right. They could come in with MF16, I mean, MF24, and they could get MF16 with minimum standards, and there's no way to turn that down either. So the question still to be addressed is whether or not multifamily design standards can be changed enough to raise the minimum to something that we can get without having to go with a PUD. So I think that's something that Ernest and I will have to, to research and see if that's even a possibility. I don't know if the legislation that passed, do you recall, Ernest, whether it was just single family or was it kind of across the board? I don't recall. This was the one that <laughs> Hester mm -hmm. uh, got yep. through a couple of sessions ago that yep. we bucked up about. We were concerned about our overlay district. Yep. We were concerned about, but but this way, but the, but the law is written where if the developer agrees, then there's no... There's no question about any of the that's legislation. Where the PUD that's right. gives us a, a way to help. And it really gives us a chance to sit down with the developer and, and try to understand what they're trying to accomplish and how we can get that done through a PUD document. And, and it takes time. But for the most part, all of the projects we've gotten recently have been good quality projects. And this is a good quality project. I'm not denying that it's a good quality project. I like the idea of, of the incentives. Mm -hmm. What I don't like the idea of is the giving up of density to get those incentives. Well, well Mark, the way our multifamily design standards are written now are to in encourage in, to include incentives to get a higher density. Yeah. yeah. But it also gives you the ability to go after MF24 and Bill 16 and have to do nothing. That's the risk we take when we ask for an MF24 that they want to do 16. We just, re, we just rezoned two other projects to MF24 in the overlay district, knowing that we have some overlay district standards that we can use on those that we don't have in any other, any other place. So those... MF24s were a little bit easier to to work through because we knew we had some additional standards. But if a developer wants to do 16 units per acre, they can come in and ask for an MF24 and only do the minimum, and that's what we've got. And the minimum is is basically the minimum. You know, it's not it's not this kind of quality. Any other questions, comments? Hey, Denise. Watson. No. <clears throat> Overton. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Bailey. No. Harriman. Yes. Fujerus. Yes. Williams. Yes. Carries five two. There's an emergency clause. Move the emergency clause be adopted. Second. Overton. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Bailey. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes. Fujerus. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Emergency clause carries seven zero. And as always, there's pending development on these. That's why it has an emergency clause. Okay, the next item is a request to... Oh, let me move on here. Is a request to rezone 0.32 acres, lot 7B in Howard Acres. The request is to rezone it from MF2 to MF4. The Planning Commission recommends approval of this rezoning request. The title of the ordinance reads an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307 
the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springville, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto, by rezoning certain lands from low density multifamily residential district MF2 to low medium density multifamily residential district MF4 and declaring an emergency. And the difference between the MF2 and the MF4 is a smaller lot size for a duplex. It's not part of that subdivision, right? Or is it? It is part of that subdivision, yes. There's no restrictions on that subdivision that says you can't put a duplex in it because we already checked that. And is it a, a fronts OY row? Yes, it fronts off. And there's an existing structure on there, and they want to add a duplex to it. But the lot size in the MF2 is too large. It needs to go to a MF4 so that one would fit. They still got to get sewer to it. The lot hasn't actually been split yet because they have to get sewer to it and it hasn't happened yet. I move the ordinance be adopted. Is there any opposition? Not going to get a second? Second. Thank you. We got a motion and a second. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Fujiroos? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Uh, has emergency clause. Move right. the emergency clause be adopted. <laughs> second. Bailey? Yes. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Fujiroos? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. About the ordinance emergency clause carry 7 0. The next request is to rezone 17.91 acres located on the south side of Harbor Avenue east of West Elm Estates. Uh, the request is to rezone the property from Agricultural District A1 to Low Density Single Family Residential District SF1. Planning Commission recommends approval of the rezoning request. The title of the ordinance reads An ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springdale, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto, by rezoning certain lands from Agricultural District A1 to Low Density Single Family Residential District SF1 and declaring an emergency. Any ordinance be adopted? Second. Motion and second to approve the ordinance. Are there any other questions or comments? So on the screen that we have, it shows it going on the north side of right. Harbor. It's actually just the property to the south. We okay. checked the legal description. It's just to the property to the south, and it's not that little triangle that's in Tiny Town either. Any other comments? Anybody in the room? Okay, Denise. Harriman. Yes, ma'am. Fujiroos. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Bailey. Yes, ma'am. Move the emergency clause be adopted. Second. Fujiroos? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes, ma Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 7 0. The next item is a request to rezone property located at 700 South 48th Street. It's a 1.6 acre track. Uh, the original request, request that came in was from A1 to C6, and after working with the developer, uh, the potential buyers of the property, we determined that a C5 would still address the needs that they had for this piece of property. So they uh, re agreed to downgrade the request to a C5. Planning Commission recommends approval of the C5. The title of the ordinance reads, an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Springville, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto, by rezoning certain lands from Agriculture District A1 to Thoroughfare Commercial District C5 and declaring an emergency. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions or comments? Anybody in the room? Okay, Denise. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Fujiroos? Yes. Move the emergency clause be adopted. Second. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Fujiroos? Yes. Williams? Yes. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 7 0. The next item is the property just to the north of that tra track we just rezoned from uh, at the corner of the intersection of South 48th Street and Moon Lane. It is a 0.36 acre track. It originally came again in it as a C6, and after consultation with the uh, owners and the potential use for the property, they agreed to downgrade, and, and they are. 
uh, downgrading it to a C5 as well. Planning Commission recommends approval of the C5 downgrade. The title of the ordinance reads an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the City of Springfield, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto. By rezoning certain lands from General Commercial District C2 to Thoroughfare Commercial District C5 and declaring an emergency. I'll make a motion that the ordinance pass. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Bujarus? Yes, ma'am. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. <coughs> Move the emergency clause be adopted. Second. Okay. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Bujarus? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 7-0. The next item is a conditional use request for a use unit three, which is a utility facilities in an A1 zone. The property is owned by Ozarks Electric. They are requesting the conditional use. They will be putting on a office facility and a maintenance shop at that location. Uh, Planning Commission recommends approval of the conditional use and the title of the resolution reads, a resolution approving a conditional use at the northeast corner of East Robinson and East Friendship Road is set forth in ordinance number 4030 and would be for a use unit three utility facilities in an A1 zone. And that's the elevations of the structures that nice. are to be built at that location. Move resolution to pass. Second. Is that typical to have that in an A1 or is that just It can okay, be in so. an A1 zone. <clears throat> it's a conditional use in whatever zone they want to go in and there really was no need to, to rezone it to anything different. The property to the um, east of it where the solar farm is not in the city limits. So This is in the city limits? This is in the city limits. We right. need to talk with them about getting, uh, I know they've expressed, expressed an interest in bringing the solar farm in. We need to. I think once we get all this approved and the conditional use moves forward, we can probably talk about getting that done. Okay. Did we get a motion yes. and a second? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else on this one? Okay, Denise. Bailey. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Bujarus? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Carry 7 0. The next item is a waiver request of street improvements and uh, in connection with the I 49 Industrial Park. If you'll remember, this is a project that we've approved uh, previously. It, the property to the east of it includes where the uh, construction is underway and where Dixieland will go through. Uh, the Planning Commission reviewed this re request and recommends uh, payment in lieu of improvements for improvements on Apple Blossom and a waiver of the improvements on Graham Road. They will have no access to Graham Road. And with the 412 bypass coming through, Graham Road will be cut off, so we don't really know what, what the status of that's going to be long term. And so the Planning Commission recommends that the uh, approval of payment in lieu of improvements for Apple Blossom, which I believe the developers already agreed to, we just haven't settled on an amount, and then a waiver of the street improvements on Graham Road. The title of the resolution reads, a resolution approving a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curb guts and gutters, and sidewalks set forth in ordinance number 3725 to I-49 Industrial Park Phase 2 in connection with L-2257, a large-scale development plan. And Did you say, what did you say about Dixieland? Dixieland is on the agenda tonight, but it's to the further to the east of this piece of property. Does it touch this property on the east? Well, it touches the extended of this property to the south. If you go back and look at the area, the property that's on the south, on that south side goes all the way over to where Dixieland would be going through. On the back side of those houses on Walden is where Dixie Lane's going through. And that other phase of it is that first phase that's already under construction. If you go out there, the building's... The wall, there's lots of walls. I think all the walls are up. Right? Yep, all the walls are up. It's a, it's a so huge building. So the only building. two roads that touch this property we're dealing with tonight is Apple Blossom and Graham. Right, and it's only Apple Blossom, that little narrow piece that's right across from the entrance into And, and they're going JB to do Hunt. a payment in lieu of They're doing that. payment in lieu right. of that one and then waive the street improvements on Graham Road because they're not going to access it. None of these facilities will access from them. And as you can see, the 412 bypass is going to cut that off. We don't Do really we think know it's going to be a, what's going to happen. It's going to be cut off. It's not going to go over. We don't know. I don't know, Ben, unless you've seen something. Not that it matters on this. Yeah, we don't know about Graham. Okay. We're... And, you know. and do we have any plans for improvements for Apple Blossom? Well, that's something we're going to have to work on because now we have 
a larger portion of it in Springdale with the Bethel Heights consolidation, and now we only have that small piece. And, and we have Lowell on the other side, and, and I think we are, something's gonna have to be done about it. I think when and how, when Apple Blossom gets improved is going to sort of depend on our next bond issue and on cooperation uh, with the city of Lowell. But it, it does need to be improved, especially with the expansions that J.B. Hunt started. So if about. we did improve Apple Blossom with a bond issue, what would happen to their payment in lieu of? Well, it, it would, would just be put into the project. Right. It would be transferred to that project. That's what we do with payment in lieu of yeah. improvements. We hold them in an escrow account until we have a project, and we transfer that over yeah. to those. I think the motion was option three, but shouldn't it be option one? Well, they've already agreed to... Because option three says payment in lieu up to Graham Road. Okay, no, it should be option one for the waiver of Graham Road, and they've already agreed to the payment in lieu. I, I withdraw amend my motion. You can amend it. I, I will amend my motion to option one. Option one. Oh, I don't think I can withdraw my motion. <laughs> second. Still a good second. <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone? Anyone in the room? Okay, Denise. Perryman. Bidgeroos? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. 37-0. These items are a little bit out of order, but anyway. The next item is a waiver request for street improvements along 412 of a sidewalk in connection with the Ozarks Electric Project. They are doing the street improvements on Friendship, but they're asking for a waiver of the sidewalk along 412. There's a drainage structure down through there. We don't know whether or not the highway department would even allow them to put a sidewalk on there. So the Planning Commission is recommend, recommending approval of this uh, waiver request with option one. Um, a resolution approving a waiver of streets, improvements, drainage, curb gutters, and sidewalks is set forth in ordinance number 3725 to Ozarks Electric in connection with L2258, a large scale development. Move the resolution be adopted to option one. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? Anyone? Hey, Denise. Fidgeroos? <coughs> yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Carry seven zero. And the next one is back to the Ramsey at, at Springdale. They're asking for a waiver of street improvements along Bob Mills. Planning Commission is recommending paver, payment in lieu of improvements to that portion that it fronts their property on Bob Mills. Um, <coughs> title of the resolution re reads a resolution approving a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curbs, gutters, and sidewalks set forth in ordinance number 3725 to the Ramsey at Springdale connection with L2259 large scale development plan. Connor, do y'all want to, are you willing to do the payment in lieu of or do you want to, okay, they're willing to do that. We just need yeah. That there's a typo on. There's a there's a typo in the in the resolution that you have in your packet, and I have a new one already ready to go. Yes, sorry, I didn't say that at the very beginning, but I already have fixed that. I just didn't make enough copies. I didn't catch it till late this afternoon. Do we have any plans for Bob Mills? There's a lot of development occurring out in that area and I think long term we're going to have to look yeah. at what kind of improvements need to be done to, have to address that and 48 48 street way. and you know 56 is being extended how do we get from 56 to 48 there's going to have to be something looked at in that entire area because there's a lot of development going on out there this one doesn't contribute as much to that situation as the as the developments to the north because it has access on wow. 48 street at 48th Street that's already approved and on uh, and they're doing the improvements or making payment and live improvements for the uh, improvements on uh, uh, Oak Grove Road right I have to remember which Grove it they're is they're doing those improvements mm -hmm. or making payment in lieu of I don't know did oh, okay. there was they're making payment in lieu of on those okay and, and there's some discussion about how that intersection is going to work uh, and they're working with engineering on getting that worked out too the resolution be adopted second okay we have a motion and a second any further <coughs> comments or questions anyone hey Patsy just real quick that top right corner <coughs> northeast what is that is that the dog park area or is that what it's just green space, just green space.
make a great place to play soccer or kind of pick up game there too. I just wondering about a, a second or a third entrance there. Well, in looking at it, I don't know that it needs a third entrance as much as, I mean, I think the traffic flows and the way they have it designed and the traffic calming they did with the parking along the street, I think it'll function pretty well as it is. I don't know that it, it needs a second one. Um, the fire code doesn't require it because I got it on both sides, so. Okay, build a soccer field. Uh, I guess we need to vote. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we had a motion and a second. All right. Roll call, please. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bayer? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Fujerus? Yes. Carry 7 0. And the last one is a request for a waiver of street improvements in conjunction with Village Travel. This is a uh, structure that's being built at the end of the street. And as you see on this, the master street plan shows an extension. Is this 45th? 45th place? 40, yeah, 45th, I think. 45th place. Yeah, 45th Street. And they're asking for uh, waivers of doing any of those improvements. They'll have an access there on the, on the cul-de-sac. They'll donate the right-of-way, but they're not doing any street improvements. And right now, it just goes up to that, and it doesn't, doesn't connect with anything. But we would have the right of way if we extended this further on to the north. The Planning Commission recommends approval of. Oh no, I, I take that back. The Planning Commission recommended payment in lieu of improvements. Um, the title of the resolution reads: A resolution approving a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curb, gutters, and sidewalks, as set forth in Ordinance Number Thirty-Seven Twenty-Five to Village Travel Center, connection with L Twenty-Two Sixty-Four Large Scale Development Plan, and it's Option Three. And this is what. The building itself is going to leak. It's going to be a maintenance facility for the village bus line. You see the structures on the top is really what it's going to look like. That's kind of showing us their colors, their brand colors, and that's the layout for that location. It comes in as a non-large scale because that's a commercially developed. So the improvements property. they'll be making, if this is approved this way, they'll be making payment in lieu of will be basically sidewalk and some drainage? Well, and half the street, basically. Half the street if it were extended, yes. Half the street, oh, works, curb, I, gutter, I, and sidewalks. That's okay. that's what the master street plan shows it to be extended beyond All that right. cul-de-sac, and that's what it's for. So it's basically everything along the west side of this property mm -hmm. is what they're talking about, mm -hmm. doing pavement blue up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And if the street is extended, I don't know if they would look at changing the location of their drive. I mean, I don't know that we have anything planned to move that forward, but that's... That's what's on the master street plan. I move for approval option three. And is this, so this sidewalk is not can, gonna connect to anything? It'll connect and go around to the other side of the cul-de-sac until the rest of the development is done. And so then- they are adding the sidewalk. Yeah, they'll add pieces of the sidewalk to get around. When you get to the north side of their drive, I don't know that there's much room to put a sidewalk, right. but it'll connect to the one to the south. And the south, okay. Yeah. Okay. And Acme Brick put theirs in. As you can see, it's on that on that aerial. It's already in there. Yeah. All right. We got a motion, a second. Any other questions? Anyone? Any? Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Lawson. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Harriman. Yes. Yes. Williams. Yes. Carry seven zero. All right. Thank you. Item eight, uh, Finance Committee, Chairman Jeff Watson, uh, Jeff. You want I, to take that, or you I'll, want? I think Mike Lawson okay. did that. Uh, and I don't have my notepad, so if Mike doesn't mind, okay. I don't know that I remember, but I'll take. It. <laughs> I'm you, they'll two, come I'm back good to for you. two weeks. So yeah, I'm not good for, or one week. I'm not good for two. All right, we had uh, two before us that night in finance. The first resolution. Uh, I'll go ahead and read it. It's a resolution accepting the guaranteed maximum price for construction of Luther George Park improvement project. Uh, it was milestone was eleven. 7, 3, 11, 7, 38, 372 was the price not to exceed. And I don't believe we had any conversation or issues that night or discussion, best I remember. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? 
Perryman? Vigerus? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. 37 0. The second was a resolution. Uh, it was recommended for approval as well. I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with Crossland Heavy Contractors Inc. for construction of South Dixieland Road extension. And like I said, it was forwarded. I know there was some conversation from Ben that they didn't take the original bid. I'll let you discuss that, but yeah, it is Crossland. Yeah, we, we opened, uh, opened bids November 1st and there were three bidders. And uh, the apparent low bidder was Boyle's Construction out of Little Rock. We've never worked with them before, so we did some research. And uh, they had a little irregularity in their bid. They had one item that really is about $575,000 that they cost themselves by type, putting in a wrong number. Um, so in looking at that and then looking at their financial st situation and stability and the amount of equipment that they have available, it's our recommendation that we move on to the second bidder, um, which is Crossland Heavy con Contracting. Um, the engineer's estimate was $10 million, so this is about 25% under the engineer's estimate, so we're still getting a very good price. Um, and we're also working with someone that, that we know and, and is currently working on the Harbor Avenue project and, and doing a good job. So that's, that's why we're recommending that. Happy I'll, to answer any questions you might have. I'll make a motion that the resolution pass. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any other comments or questions? Okay, Denise. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Bailey. Yes, ma Perryman. Bidgerus. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Carry 7 0. All right. Item 9, I'm going to turn over to our city attorney. Thank you. Uh, this is a resolution auth authorizing the grant of a general utility water sewer easement across property owned by the city of Springdale, Washington County, Arkansas. This is actually at the airport and it's in connection with a uh, fire hydrant extension for a new hangar going in at the airport that the uh, water and sewer department needed a small additional easement than what was there already. Move resolution pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve the resolution. Any other comments or questions? So who are we granting this easement to? Water Springdale Water. It's attached on page Read page 59 in the packet, the easement document. It's kind of a silly question, you know, after all these years, but if it's city property, do we have to grant an easement to spring no water? Yep. Yes, sir. I guess they're not technically separate we've, commission. Group. We've yeah. done it numerous, numerous times on various different things over the years. Okay. Just making off. sure. Yes. Think so. <laughs> Any other questions? <clears throat> All right. Roll call, please. Bailey. Yes, ma'am. Harriman. Yes, ma Bidgerus. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Hoberton. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Carry seven zero. All right. Colby's not here tonight. Uh, a res I'll read number ten. Uh, resolution authorizing the destruction of old accounting records. And uh, do we have to, does the council have to decide? You don't have to have anybody there. Have to be want to be there? I think just pass the resolution, unless you want to make Rex or Amelia or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I see Colby rip page by page, I'll be fine with that. We should ask Kathy to come back and do it. <laughs> no machines. You can put it on his resume. It's certain number. Um, how many years? How many yeah, Rex years? Bailey can do it. Okay, we got a we got a motion. How many years of records is that? I forget. Just the we do it once a year, I think. <laughs> no. yeah, seven years old. Yeah, seven, some okay. seven, some five. There's a list in there. If you look at them. I don't. I didn't hear a second. Second. Okay. All right. Roll call, please. Harriman. Fujerus. Yes. Williams. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Bailey. Yes. All right, and I'll go ahead and read 11. Ann is here uh, from the library, but it's a resolution making an appointment to the Springdale Library Board. This is uh, to appoint Matt Fryer. Matt was on for 
some years and was off a little bit, and now he's he's willing to come back on, fill a vacancy. Uh, so I've read the resolution. I think my, Rex, Rex got the motion and Randall second. All right. Roll call, please. Sujuris? Yes. Williams? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. Harriman? Yes, ma'am. Carry 7 0. All right, thank you. And please pass along our thanks to Matt for his willingness to serve. Uh, I do have one before we go to council member. Uh, ben, what, what was it I was going to try and bring up? Oh, uh, Marchant. Marchant, Kerry Smith, and 112. I just wanted to bring it up in case you're <coughs> still getting questions. We I know we got some emails about it, about the need for a temporary signal out there, uh, and we're working on that. Ben, do you want to, just real quick, uh, working with James, Basically, and, and we still got to get approval from RDOT, but well, tell we, us. We, we've got the initial approval from RDOT. So they had done a warrant study a while ago, and it came back that it did not warrant a signal. We asked them to, re to review that and that we had enough equipment in our inventory that we could probably put together a temporary signal. So they went back, reviewed it, and it did warrant a signal, so they're okay with us putting up a temporary. Thank so. Shiloh and Huntsville, are there any others? Should we <laughs> should we start bidding on these? <laughs> yeah. So right. anyway, it's our intent to to we've got to draw it up, submit it to yeah. them. It's going to be a process, but we do have the ability to put a signal there. Now. We want to be sure y'all knew that in case you get some questions because so, traffic is pretty bad out so there. So if you're doing a temporary, is that until they improve Highway 112? Is that what it is? That's right. It's it's with the Highway 112 improvement that's slated to get a roundabout. They're putting a roundabout in. That's okay. yes. Should we take down the temporary? Yeah, Let's put it back in inventory and use it another day. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Ben, I need to ask you. Ben, I need to ask yep. you when that Go comment ahead. section for the council. Can I do it now? Sure. Okay. Uh, 64th Street. When is it supposed to be done? I, I, you might you might answer this question before, but I've been asked numerous times. Yeah. Um, I would have if you'd asked me last month. I would have told you November 18th. However, AT&T had a line that was found to be in the way and it's delayed things just a bit. Um, right now, I, I would say that I think we'll be driving on it by Christmas. Well, actually, it's, it's open now. I All drove it I drove it this afternoon yeah. late. And, uh, but down to southbound, uh, as you approach Watkins, you've got one lane. That's right. Southbound. So that's what I'm saying. By Christmas, you'll have two lanes. Yeah, okay. Okay. So I've you can, you can I've drive been asked now. a bunch of questions, and I've, I've been meaning to ask, but I keep forgetting. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's phase one. That's just from four, between 412 and Watkins. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's, that's, that's okay. where we're, yeah. when okay. we're When we're having issues with with the companies like this, can we not just run a, like a line under there for them to run it through whenever they get around to it instead of holding up huge projects? I mean, if we could just. Well, the problem is it was an existing line. And yeah, it's fiber it's, optic, so you can't break that line. It'll put how many ever thousand people out of out of internet service. So, sure. Um, so you got to wait for that line to be lowered. And all they did was came dug right alongside of it, threw it in the trench a little bit lower than where it was, and the problem solved. But it just takes time once you find it to go through the process of getting them out there to do it. Um, we would do that if it were a new, like if it were Dixie Land, and there was some utilities that, that wanted to be there but weren't on our timeline, sure, we'd throw some conduit under there and, and move on, let them use it in, at a later date. Um, there's some conduit under Don Tyson Parkway in various areas for exactly that. Okay, good question. All right, any other comments from council? City attorney? No, sir. I'm, I'm empty. <laughs> All right, we're adjourned, thank you.